You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. I hope everyone had a good weekend, got some R&R on Sunday, and it is time for a new week. And yes, Mondays suck. Everybody knows that. But don't feel bad. By the time you're listening to this, I will be at work right there with you. But hey, think about it like this. Mondays give you another shot for a new week. The timetable resets, and we get to go a whole new week And so if you had a bad week last week, hopefully it's better this week. It's weird how we live our lives one week at a time. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, embedded in our human DNA or what, but it seems we do live our life one week at a time. You would think it'd be one day at a time, but no, it's more, I think it's, I think it's probably a universal thought that we live, we live cycles one week at a time. We live our lives one week at a time. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe something we'll look into. Pretty interesting. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff happened over the weekend. You had the the acquittal of Ken Paxton, Attorney General Ken Paxton in Texas. This guy is an absolute Viking for the conservative movement. This this guy was amazing. And listen, the Bushies and the Romneys and the Chris Christies, the old school Republicans, you know, the feckless, worthless, spineless people, the polit- Republican politicians that allowed the left and the Democrats to move this entire country and our culture to the left. They don't want to lose their party and they see they're losing it and they're trying desperately to hang on to it. That is why even Republicans target Republicans. Yes, you do not see this type of behavior on the Democrat side. Democrats do not go after their own. They just don't unless they see that they are a threat to the Democrat movement like Tulsi Gabbard. um, Who's another one? The Van Jones guy. If they betrayed the Democrat Party, then yes. But even then, they don't go after them as bad as they as bad as the Republicans go after Republicans. So Ken Paxton was brought up on some BS impeachment charges, 16 charges with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. So they actually got the FBI involved. Go figure. They are weaponizing the FBI to bludgeon anyone that is a threat to their regime. So that happened over the weekend. But there's a lot of other stuff I want to get into. And one of the things that we talked about a while back ago was the Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot. This was, I would say, probably the little January 6th. This was the warm up to the January 6th Fed surrection, the false flag operation conducted by the United States government against its own people on January 6th in our nation's capital. The Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot that happened in Michigan, I think, was a warm up and a test run for January 6th. It very, very similar circumstances, very similar. And unfortunately, I do think it nabbed a couple, but all of them as of right now, this was the last these were the last three cases that were a part of the Michigan Governor Whitmer kidnapping plot. And it's done. And look. It was no doubt a ginormous case of entrapment set up by the FBI. So imagine that our own institutions, our own taxpayer funded intel agencies are now targeting Americans inside the country and not domestic terrorists, not anybody that wants to blow anything up, but Trump supporters. Go figure. Anybody that says they support Trump is now considered a domestic terrorist in the eyes of the FBI. This is what happens when you have a institution, a government run institution that has too much money, too much time, too much overhead and not enough things to do. They end up turning their sights on regular Americans. They gained a lot of this power after 9-11. And it's just unfortunate that the Patriot Act ever got through. But they used just like everything else, they used a crisis to their advantage. So they knew that the Patriot Act would have never got through if not for the tragic event of 9-11 that scarred everybody in this country, anybody that was living. It's, it's really wild that every single person you talk to about 9-11, if they were alive at the time, 
They know exactly what they were doing and where they were at. It is a pretty wild, bizarre phenomenon how that happens, but I remember exactly where I was. I was in seventh grade math class, and I remember sitting there. The math teacher walked out of the classroom, talked to another teacher, then ran inside, turned the TV on, put her hand over her mouth and said, oh my God. And, and my math teacher was just going berserk, was, was running out of the classroom, running down the hall to another teacher. They were yelling and it, they, they both came back into the classroom and then they just kept saying, oh my God, oh my God. As kids in seventh grade, I have to say, it really didn't impact me at the moment. I was just like, what is this? This is crazy. Like this skyscraper just fell down because at the time we didn't know it was terrorist attacks. Um, I thought at the time it was just a giant fire. I, I didn't know because I didn't know a plane ran into it until later on. I mean, a little later, like 10, 15 minutes later. And then when the second plane hit, that's when everyone knew, okay, this is a terrorist attack. Um, and that is when, and then when that first building fell, everyone just started just, it was an awful, awful event. However, in the guise of 9-11, they got past the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act was an absolute disaster for the American people. You want to talk about an absolute assault on American people's liberties and freedoms and privacy? That is the Patriot Act. And ever since then, the FBI, the CIA, the intel agencies have been nonstop spying on American people and doing everything the founders were afraid of, doing everything that people that were opposed to the Patriot Act was afraid of happening. Well, this is an example of what a weaponized intel agency like the FBI can do to the American people. Michigan jury acquits the last three men in the plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. So three men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer in 2020 were acquitted on Friday. William Knoll, twin brother Michael Knoll, and Eric Molitor were found not guilty of providing support for a terrorist act and a weapon charge. Deliberations began Thursday. Quote, you gentlemen are free to leave, Judge Charles Hamlin said. The trio is the last of the 14 men to face charges in state or federal court. Nine were convicted and now five have been cleared. So they got four. They got four in entrapment. Incredible. So the men charged with aiding Michigan Governor Whitmer kidnapping attempt portrayed himself as terrified by plot. The Knowles and Molitor were accused of participating in military style drills and traveling to the area around Whitmer's vacation home in northern Michigan in what prosecutors have described as a homegrown terrorism plot. Key players, Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr., were each convicted of kidnapping conspiracy last year. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel said the verdicts are not what we hoped for. Really? You entrapped these people with a, a massive group of FBI informants and this isn't the result you wanted? What is the result you wanted exactly? These people to die? You wanted them to spend the rest of their life in prison? This is what the Democrats think of their fellow Americans. This is how much they disdain Trump supporters or anybody they even think of voting for Trump. Anybody that flies a flag, they hate them. Anybody that loves this country, they hate them. Anybody that is a patriot, they'd hate them. I'm telling you, these people hate this country and they hate people that love this country because anybody that loves this country loves Donald Trump. And so they just automatically correlate. If you fly a flag, if you love this country and you do not like seeing it get destroyed by Democrats, then you are a terrorist. So a juror approached Molitor outside the courthouse and said he was very, very sorry for all he had to go through. Defense attorney William Barnet told the Associated Press, quote, the man shook his hand and gave him a hug. They went after these people. They went after three people's lives and destroyed them for three years, Barnet said of the attorney general's office. Quote, I'm just lost for words. This is an emotional moment. Authorities said the plot against Whitmer simmered in 2020 and was fueled by government restrictions during the COVID-19 pandemic. After the plot was thwarted, Whitmer blamed then-President Donald Trump, saying he had given comfort to those who spread fear and hatred and division. Trump called the kidnapping plan a fake deal in August in 2022. If this is not a, an example as to what these people are willing to go through to beat Donald Trump in an election, then I don't know what else to tell you. Because that is exactly what this was. 
This was a way for the FBI to help the Democrat Party into defeating Donald Trump in the election. This went down weeks before the 2020 election, and every single Democrat used this to sway likely Trump voters from voting for Trump, thinking that he was too extreme and that his followers were too extreme. How many people do you think this affected in the election? How did this impact the election? This is the type of stuff the FBI is doing right now in this country. This is disgusting behavior. And unfortunately, four of these men, four of these men, I don't know what happened to them. I haven't looked that up, but they're most likely going to prison for a long time. The rest of these guys luckily got out. They got out of it because the FBI did a botchy entrapment job. So you're going to sit there and tell me that January 6th wasn't a Fed surrection? It wasn't a false flag operation just like this one? Of course it was. This is why you had FBI informants on January 6th that day. This is why you had undercover officers on January 6th. It was a situation very, very similar to this. And I will say this, the guy, the, the, the lead agent of the Michigan branch was Stephen D. Antuono. After this entrapment, after this case, they promoted him. So instead of firing him like he should have been for entrapping Americans in a plot where there was almost more undercover FBI informants than there were actual suspects, they promoted him to the Washington, D.C. office to lead up to the Donald Trump SWAT raid on Mar-a-Lago. He disagreed with that SWAT raid. He came out and said, I disagree with what they did. I did not approve of that raid. And in fact, he almost, with, you know, with not so many words, said they absolutely shouldn't have done it. But the thing is, is... What are these people doing? What these people did in Michigan is probably exactly what they did on January 6th. And we are going to find out, ladies and gentlemen, years from now, we're going to find out that January 6th was a false flag operation conducted by intel agencies like the FBI with connections with the Democrat Party. And I'm sure the deep state bureaucrats, Democrat bureaucrats, and probably maybe even Republicans. This is why it is so important to investigate what happened on January 6th. This is why I say impeachment of Joe Biden is important. Getting the evidence out there for people to see is important. But why are they not looking into January 6th? Because, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot move on as a country if we do not figure out what happened on January 6th that day. What really all this boils down to the election on 2020. All these events spurred because people thought and people believe still to this day that the 2020 election was rigged and stolen. And because the people thought it was stolen, they went to go protest their government, petition their government as they're legally and constitutionally allowed to do, one of their God-given rights. They got set up in a giant entrapment scheme. I'm telling you that's what it was. I guarantee it. And we need to find out what happened in that election. Because if it turns out, if it turns out that there was enough cheating in that election that allowed Joe Biden to cross the finish line and become president, that absolutely destroyed this country for four years and caused war and, and wreaked havoc overseas in foreign countries, we got a big issue, a really big issue. Now, I'm not making excuses for the people that were violent on 2020. Every single person you ask about January 6th, every sane, rational person will tell you that what happened on January 6th was bad and the people that were violent need to pay the price. But really, it was no different than the riots that we've seen on 2020. In fact, I would say it was worse because the riots of 2020 that everybody had to sit and watch because of George Floyd, so you had BLM, Antifa, rioting and looting and killing people for an entire summer. This is why people are pissed off about J6 people that have walked into a Capitol building and walked out are now being sent to prison for years when nobody can see anybody being convicted or charged or indicted or arrested for any of the rioting or looting or burning or murdering during the 2020 riots where they said mostly peaceful, the mostly peaceful protests. This is the injustice we are watching. The disparate treatment between people, depending on which political party you support. So everyone else had to lock down inside their homes. 
unless you were protesting for BLM and George Floyd. It is truly incredible. We're watching our justice system be politicized by politicians and deep state actors, the bureaucracy, this fourth branch of government that these corrupt, these corrupt people, these corrupt bureaucrats have created for themselves. And they use the intel agencies like the FBI to destroy political movements like the MAGA movement. And how they did it was with January 6th. We still to this day don't know how many informants were at the Capitol that day. That should be the very first thing the American people know. Why are these types of operations being conducted on American people? This is the type of stuff they do in foreign countries. But because you have an FBI, an Intel system, a Intel, an Intel system that is so bloated and so big and wasteful and ineffective that they, they, they need to continue their budget. They need to prove to the people that they're still worth their keep. And so what do they do? Oh, just start the largest investigation in, in DOJ history against American people. Target parents at school board meetings. Target Americans that were there protesting their government, holding American flags and MAGA flags, and they're getting months in prison. And mind you, this is months after they already spent months in pretrial detention. What these judges are doing is disgraceful and disgusting. And I hope to God one day we find out so that these judges can see what they were a part of. These, these, these judges should be ashamed of themselves, ashamed, ashamed of themselves. If this was happening to the Democrats, if these were all BLM protesters being imprisoned in solitary confinement for years on pretrial detention, the Democrat Party would be outraged. In fact, this wouldn't even be happening right now. This is completely obvious to everybody in this country. Everybody can see the disparate treatment, depending on which political party you support. Everyone could see how the justice system has been politicized, that Lady, Lady Justice is no longer blind. And look, it is, this is just one of the things that needs to happen in 2024. This is just one of the reasons why we must defeat the Democrats in 2024. I don't care who it is, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, or both. I don't care. But the deep state, these intel agencies like this corrupt FBI, it's not all of the FBI agents. You know, it's not all of them. A lot of these people love this country. I'm talking about the ones that approve of SWAT raiding former presidents' homes for political reasons. I'm talking about the leadership, the bureaucrats that conduct false flag operations on American people, all the, the undercover FBI informants that were at January 6th. Those people need to be fired. Everything needs to be revealed to the American people exactly what happened on that day. But we don't. Everything's in the dark like a complete blackout, like nobody's supposed to know what happened. And you still have people being arrested around the country for something happened three years ago. You still have what seems to be the, the country's largest manhunt for people that just went to the Capitol, showed up, and now they're going to prison for years. You have some people that weren't even there, like this Enrique Tario guy. I don't even know who he is. The Proud Boys leader wasn't even there, just got 22 years in prison. And he's sitting there warning the American people that are, they are coming after Trump. And then after Trump, they'll be coming after the rest of us. He is warning people that they are going to do to everyone else what they did to him. And you say it can't happen, but it will. It's just a matter of time. This is not a Republican Democrat thing. This is a system versus the American people. They see the American people that just want to get their country back from these corrupt these corrupt people, they see them as a threat. And the way they get control is exactly what you're watching happen right now. You have this massive corrupt DC swamp that is so powerful and so big that nothing can stop it except for our democracy, except for our elections. And I'm telling you right now, if, if Democrats win, we may never have safe, secure elections again. And so I just found this article to be disgraceful how years down the road we find out that the Whitmer plot, the kidnapping plot that they used to bludgeon Donald Trump and his supporters was all a damn entrapment scheme and ruined 13 people's lives, ruined them. You know how much money it costs to defend themselves against this? Millions of dollars. These people's lives are ruined and in some cases will never be the same because four of these guys got locked up and are still there and who knows for how long. This is disgusting and disgraceful, man. Disgusting and disgraceful.
I wanted that just pissed me off to no end if you couldn't tell. All right, so moving on. I want to get in. Oh, first of all, listen to this. So if you didn't believe that the secularists in this country would worship will worship anything, listen to this. I got an article here from WOR 710 in New York City. The Empire State Building shines Pfizer blue for updated COVID-19 shots. <laughs> These people are sick. That Our society, our culture is broken, emotionally and psychologically broken. Did you know that the United States is the most medicated country on the planet? Isn't that weird? And it's only one of two countries in the entire world that allows pharmaceutical advertisements on TV? Yeah, I didn't know that. So our country and another country, two countries in the whole world, are the only countries that allow pharmaceutical companies to advertise drugs on TV or advertise drugs, period. So I got this article here just real quick. Seems like COVID's everywhere again, but here's good news from Pfizer. This season's updated COVID-19 shots are now available for ages six months and up, and they're designed to help protect against recent variants. That is why today at 8 p.m., the Empire State Building turns its, uh, turned its iconic building blue to announce that the CDC recommends everyone six months of age and older to get this season's updated COVID-19 shot. The blue light symbolizes our gratitude and appreciation for the updated vaccines and all those who made it possible. I, I, folks, I swear, I feel like we're living in some kind of novel, dude. I feel like we're living in some kind of George Orwell's novel. We have buildings lighting up for the celebration of a COVID-19 shot from Pfizer. Mind you, Pfizer used taxpayer money to develop a vaccine and then made billions and billions of dollars in profit that they get to keep. This is the most, what happened during the pandemic is the most egregious thing we have ever seen in this country, ever. Not, not just in modern history, ever. What they did during the pandemic should never, ever be forgotten, ever. Don't forget that they made people die alone, away from their families. Don't ever forget that they put infected patients into nursing homes, causing the deaths of thousands and thousands of people. Don't ever forget that they mandated vaccines and masks. Don't ever forget that they mandated masks and told you to stay in your home while people like Nancy Pelosi went out without a mask and got her hair done. An another one, the California governor, Gavin Newsom, don't ever forget that while he, manda he mandated you to stay home and shut down people's businesses that pretty much destroyed their lives, he went out to go eat dinner. He went out to go party with friends. Don't ever forget the most egregious things these people done, including politicizing the pandemic in order to defeat Donald Trump in the election, putting the death tickers at the bottom of the screens. So that every single hour on the hour, people could see how many people have died as they're talking about Donald Trump's horrible response to the COVID pandemic. You don't think that impacted people's voting decision? Of course it did. These people politicized the pandemic to bludgeon their political opponent. They never let a crisis go to waste, ever. They went around and changed election laws unconstitutionally in some states against their state legislature by the governors to weaken our election system and then and then have the audacity after the election's over weeks after the election was supposed to be over they have the audacity to come out and tell the american people it was the most secure safest election in us history and now years down the road we're starting to find out just how much fraud there was in the election they're trying to tell you that oh there was fraud but not enough to overturn an election while at the same time, the American people know that Donald Trump lost by 42,000 votes in three or four different states, as if it was just a too big of a gap for any type of fraud to overcome. Like, these people, I'm telling you, they hate us. These people are such frauds and such phonies. I don't think they should lose the election just for their response to the pandemic. It is a disaster. What they did was wrong. I could go out a thousand things that they've done wrong. Most notably, the censorship. They censored 
people that were trying to give their fellow Americans information that may have saved their lives. How many lives did that censorship cost? How many? When you're censoring doctors and virologists that are trying to tell the American people, trying to give the American people information, and you censor them so that the American people don't get their information and they die, why is nobody held accountable for that? Hmm? Why is nobody held accountable for telling and convincing the American people that ivermectin was horse paste and that nobody should take it? And then years down the road, the FDA suddenly comes out and says, oh, yeah, ivermectin is perfectly fine for COVID. It, it, is this not unbelievable what these people did? And nobody should ever forget it. And I can go on and on about the egregious acts from the Democrat Party and the bureaucracy in, our, in Washington, D.C. Egregious acts. What, the worst to me is making people die alone. I can't think of anything more terrifying. I can't think of anything more sad. I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything worse than dying alone in a room away from your loved ones, all because your loved ones weren't allowed to go in. Or saying goodbye to your loved ones through an iPad. These people should never, ever be able to escape what they did during the pandemic. They violated people's rights. They mandated people put face coverings over their face for months, for years. They made, they gave people the ultimatum of taking a shot or losing their job through threat of OSHA. Never, ever forget what these people did during the pandemic. And if you want to talk about who handled the response better, then talk about how Joe Biden, how more people died under Joe Biden's watch during the pandemic than Donald Trump's. And he came in, into the pandemic, into his administration with a vaccine and knowledge on therapeutics and somehow still managed to have more people die of COVID. If you want to talk about the response. It's just what they did was incredibly disgusting. And just like I said, nobody should ever forget what they did. That alone should cost them the election because they gained so much power during the pandemic. It's not even funny. They closed down small businesses and left open large businesses. It was the largest transfer of wealth in human history. We watch small businesses, people's whole lives, everything that they saved for, their, their dreams, everything got shut down and destroyed in favor of places like Home Depot, Walmart, the strip clubs, the liquor store, all these places. It should have been the opposite. They should have closed down the big stores and allowed the little stores to stay open. What they did during the pandemic was awful. And Donald Trump gets some of the blame, too, for handing it over to Dr. Fauci and the scientists. They are scientists. They are not economists. The exact wrong people handled the pandemic. The exact wrong people. And we are still suffering the effects of the pandemic. Still. And it's not gone away yet. And in fact, you have places like the Empire State Building shining the top of their building blue in the name of Pfizer's new updated COVID vaccine. These people are sick and nobody should ever forget what they did to this place, ever. So there's one more thing I want to, I want to get into. And so speaking of the deep state bureaucrats, this corrupt system in our nation's capital, the Biden administration is getting scared. The Biden administration is getting real scared Donald Trump can win. And I got proof. So the Biden administration is essentially Trump proofing the federal workforce. So I got an article here from the New York Times. The Biden administration aims to Trump proof the federal workforce. Now, I'm going to read through this. And you tell me which part sounds bad about any of this. This is essentially like, this is, this is how you know the New York Times is so tone deaf. They just don't get what the American people are looking for. They don't understand what America first people are looking for, what the American first people want out of this country and out of their leadership. They don't get it. They don't understand. They like a government bureaucracy watching over them, telling them what to do. They like the condition everybody's living in now. They don't care. 
the writers and columnists at New York Times are not worried about grocery prices. They're not worried about gas prices. They're not worried about anything. So this is perfectly fine to them, just so long as Team Blue wins. They don't want to get rid of this this Leviathan. They don't want to get rid of this corrupt bureaucracy that has been putting this country in a decline for the last 40 years, except for the four years that Donald Trump was president. Go figure. They don't want to get rid of it. They want it bigger, more powerful, so that it can have more oversight of the American people. They want more. They don't want less. They want bigger. They don't want smaller. So when President Joe Biden took office, he swiftly canceled an executive order his predecessor Donald Trump had issued that could have enabled Trump to fire tens of thousands of federal workers and replace them with with loyalists. Loyalists or maybe America first people. This is where they get it twisted. They try and pretend like all Trump supporters worship Donald Trump like he's a god. This is what they don't get, man. They don't understand. With or without Donald Trump, Donald Trump is irrelevant in all of this, and they don't see that. And honestly, I don't see anything wrong with this. Good. The the federal workforce should be able to be fired. If Listen, if they're arresting and entrapping Americans, they should be fired. <sighs> but Democrats never succeeded in enacting legislation to strengthen protections for the civil service system as a matter of law. Ooh, the civil service system. This is... This is their word games, folks. This is how they do it. This is how they play the game. Word games. This is what they do. They are masters at weaponizing the language. Masters. They mastered this years ago. So now, with Trump seemingly poised to win the GOP nomination again, the Biden administration is instead trying to effectively Trump-proof the civil service with a new regulation. So I don't know. Are they saying the quiet part out loud? Are they essentially saying they know Donald Trump's going to win because Joe Biden sucks that bad? If Joe Biden was doing good right now, if everybody's paychecks were great, if every, if everybody's groceries were cheap, if inflation was low, their gas was cheap, if everybody's quality of life was improving, Joe Biden would probably win re-election. In fact, you wouldn't even see all the the hysterics out there right now about this administration. People would just people are more than willing to go on with their lives just so long as their government has their back. But we don't. We have a government that's hurting us. We have a government that's putting this country in decline. And so this is when the American people step up because the American people are not dumb. The American people know exactly what is going on. They may be panicky. They may be gullible sometimes. But the American people as a whole are not dumb. They really aren't. They know what needs to be done. They know that this country is in debt. They know they can see with their own eyes this country is in decline. They know something's not right. They may not know exactly what it is, but they know something's not right. This is why 75% of Democrats don't want Joe Biden to run again. They see what the problem is. This is why 70% of Americans think this country is heading in the wrong direction. They know there's a problem. And now they're starting to realize just where the problem lies. And so I think I think uh, the New York Times just called, essentially just said Donald Trump's probably going to win the election. On Friday, the White House proposed a new rule that would make it more onerous to reinstate Trump's old executive executive order if Trump or a like-minded Republican wins the 2024 election. But Trump allies, who would most likely have senior roles in any second Trump administration, shrugged off the proposed Biden rule, saying that they could simply use the same rule making process to roll back the new regulation and then proceed. Legal experts agreed. I don't see anything wrong with getting rid of the deep state in this country. I really don't. I don't see anything wrong with getting 30, 40, 50 year career bureaucrats that have been running the country behind the scenes for decades. I don't see anything wrong with that. And in fact, I encourage it. Every single person in this country should be able to have oversight of who's running their country because these people are not elected. These people stay in there, administration after administration. They are the real powers of this country. And people have known this for decades, going all the way back to the 70s. People have been talking about this deep state for a long time. It wasn't Donald Trump that came up with the term. They've been talking about the deep state bureaucrats, the the deep state bureaucracy for a long time. I have no problem with getting rid of people like Alexander Vindman. I have no problem with slashing the government by 75%. You wouldn't even blink an eye. Nobody would even notice the thing is shut down. And this is why I support a government shutdown coming up. 
Shut it down. Shut the whole thing down. I don't care. I don't care. McCarthy needs to grow balls, grow a spine, and get in there and be willing to shut this thing down. Do not show your cards, dude. You go in there and say, I want this, or the whole damn thing's getting shut down. Ron DeSantis agrees. Donald Trump disagrees. Donald Trump says, don't do a shutdown. They're in political mode. <clears throat> you know, so is Ron DeSantis, but Ron DeSantis gets it. You know, this is, this is not something Republicans agree on unilaterally. Some people say shut it down. Some people say pass a bill, keep it open. I say shut it down unless we get what we want. And what we want is cut the damn spending, man. Bring it. Why are we spending as much money now as we were during the pandemic when we're not in a pandemic? I mean, we are spending this country into oblivion. And what, the American people are just supposed to sign off on it every single year? The, the American people are supposed to be just okay with it? Okay, yeah, sure. Nobody does that in their own household. Nobody sits there, max out all their credit card, max out all their income, and then calls the credit card company and says, hey, I need a credit line increase. Nobody does that. People know that the government spends too much money. A billions and billions, trillions of dollars, we're in $32 trillion in debt. We are in a $2 trillion deficit, which means we're spending more money than we're even bringing in, and we're bringing in a record amount. We're bringing in more money now than ever before. It's, it's truly incredible how these people can't see it. But then again, they don't care. The bureaucrats, the bureaucracy, the deep state, they don't care. They have their money. They have their pensions and 401ks. They don't care. They don't care how much money you spend in gas. They don't care how much money you spend in groceries. They don't care. Most of them don't even do their own shopping. They don't care. This is why, this is why you see such a deep-rooted disconnection between the American people and the elite class, the leadership class. It is the first sign of a collapsing civilization. Ancient Rome was the same way. There was such a big gap in the ruling class and the regular citizens that there was just too much disconnection there. And people started getting pissed because their leaders started destroying their country and making their lives harder. And so you had rebellions. You had uprisings. This happens in every civilization, folks. This is why January 6th, it, everybody knows it's BS. Everybody knows. You're not going to sit there and tell the American people. You're not going to convince the American people that January 6th was worse than 9-11 in Pearl Harbor. You're just not going to do it. What you had was a lot of pissed off people because the bureaucracy that is destroying this country just cheated them out of an election. And so they were pissed. The founders gave them that right to be pissed. The founders gave them every right to petition their government. And then this government, this bureaucracy has the audacity to lock them up in prison for years. These people are nuts. Uh, Unfreaking believable, man. So, yes, I agree. Donald Trump, wipe the bureaucracy clean. Get rid of everybody. So, the proposed rule addresses the move Trump tried to make late in his presidency by issuing an executive order known in shorthand as Schedule F. It would have empowered his administration to strip job protections from many career, career federal employees who are supposed to be hired based on merit and cannot be arbitrarily fired. While the order said agencies should not hire or fire Schedule F employees based on political affiliation, it effectively would have made these employees more like political appointees who can be fired at will. Good. Absolutely good. Yeah. Stephen D'Antuono, that set these guys up an entrapment in the Gretchen Whitmer plot, should have been fired. They promoted his ass. This is exactly why Donald Trump should be able to fire people. Career civil servants include professional staff across the government who stay on when the presidency changes hands. They vary widely, including law enforcement officers and technical experts at agencies that Congress created to make rules aimed at ensuring the air and water are clean and food and drugs and consumer products are safe. Folks, that right there is probably less than 1% of the bureaucrats that are in our government right now. You have think tanks there. You have people getting paid that nobody even knows what they do. You have people getting paid for sitting at a desk. I mean, there is so much waste and money in our bureaucracy. There is 2 million federal employees just in our bureaucracy. 2 million in Washington, D.C. I'm not talking about the military. I'm not talking about politicians. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about staffers. I'm talking about 2 million federal employees. The bureaucracy has 2 million people in it. It's, it's truly wild. It is, the government is the only thing consistently growing in the last 60 years. 
They just hired 6,000 more bureaucrats. No, 60,000. They just hired 60,000 more bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. So the government is the only thing growing. And it is the only thing that's been growing consistently the last 60 years. It needs to be cut in half. It's spending way too much money. It's causing way too much damage to people's lives. And it's just, it's getting too big. Look, every company needs to trim the fat. Every company. Look at Elon Musk with Twitter. That guy went in there and fired 75% of his staff and he says we're running optimally now. He said there was people, there was so much overhead there that he doesn't even know what half the people did. He, so he went in and fired 75% of the staff. And he says they run like a top now. Granted, people are saying that he works the, he, he makes the people work, he works the people to death, making them sleep there, but he takes care of them also. You don't hear too many horror stories coming out of the Twitter employees now. Nope. But he's not paying people to just go drink coffee and sit in meetings all day. So if Elon Musk can do it, that's exactly how our government should be ran. Our government, and everyone's been saying this for decades, our government should be ran like a Fortune 500 company. This is the problem with government, is they just have unlimited money and they can't fail. Just like with every government program, like the post office. Yeah, people say the post office isn't paid with taxpayer money, but it is when they get a bailout for $10 billion every 10 years. That's taxpayer money. And trust me, the, the post office has been in debt for the last 40 years. It hasn't been profitable for decades, decades. And so how is a company, how is a service, they call it, still operational when it hasn't made a profit for decades? The taxpayer. These are the types of things that need to be trimmed, man. Trim the fat. My God, everybody since John Lennon. John Lennon even said, we need a businessman in the White House. We need a businessman to run this country because it needs to be ran like a business. And it does. If something is not efficient, get rid of it. If something is costing too much money, if there's no reason to spend money on it, then don't spend the money on it. But it is true and obvious, folks, with this upcoming uh, debt battle that we're going to be in. Some people are calling it's going to be a Republican civil war. People realize they are spending too much money. They have a spending problem, not an income problem, not a distribution problem, a spending problem. You guys ever heard of that? That um, You guys ever heard of that saying where $20, it costs $20,000 for a hammer in the United States government? That's true. I mean, some of the things that we get here on, you know, in, in, in uh, civilian life costs thousands and thousands of dollars because it's from the government. The government spends so much money. Some of these people have a credit card. It's essentially a access to taxpayer money. These people go out on junkets in Italy. Look at Nancy Pelosi. All these politicians, they'll take junkets to foreign countries and, and just go sit there and spend thousands and thousands of dollars of taxpayer money. I mean, my God, we got to do something with these. We got to do something. And if Donald Trump is sitting there threatening that he's going to fire the deep state bureaucracy, go right ahead. I don't think you would have one person in this country that has a problem with that. So Trump and senior advisors on his team came to believe that career officials who raised objections to their policies on legal or practical grounds, including some of their disputed immigration plans, were deliberately sabotaging their agenda, portraying federal employees as unaccount unaccountable bureaucrats. The Trump, the Trump team has argued that removing job protections for those who have any influence over policymaking is justified because it is too difficult to fire them. That's true. That is absolutely true. And, and Project 2025 is exactly that. They're bringing in American people. They're taking applicants right now as we speak from American people that want to give it a shot in the government, that have something to offer, that want to give their family a hug and kiss goodbye for four years serve their country in public office, and then leave. Go be a public servant for four years and then come back. That is exactly what we need. But people being in public, being a public service member for 40, 50 years, that's unacceptable, folks. You don't think those people are corrupt? Hell yeah, they're corrupt. You think they're efficient at 40 years in public service? Hell no, they're not. In fact, they're probably wasteful. They're a net negative. And so I have no problem with Trump doing this, and I, I hope he does. And I don't, I don't see any other American that has a problem with this either. None whatsoever. So 
I hope he does. Go in there and fire everybody by the thousands, by the thousands. Go in there and fire 10,000 federal service members right out the gate. Bring in all the people that you accepted their applications and they're ready to get on and they're ready to be hired. Bring them in and then fire the people they're replacing right there on the spot. And then just go on a hiring spree. They're doing it right now. You can go on project2025.com right now. I think it's it's project2025.org. You can go on there right now and you can fill out an application. You tell them, you tell them what service you would want to provide. You tell them your background. You give them backstory, all that stuff. It's just like filling out an application for anything else. You tell them what you think you can provide to this country and then they take a look at you. Donald Trump has a whole team. I think his name is Spencer. I can't remember his last name. Has a whole team that is doing nothing but hiring regular Americans to go to our nation's capital and help fix this country so that they can give it back to the American people. And so look, if you're up to the task, check it out. It's, uh, I think it's 2025. Let me see here. Yeah, so it's project2025.org. And it's, it's the Presidential Transition Project. So these are the people looking for Americans that want to that want to go in the public service, that have something to offer. They're not just going to hire any blow schmo. You got to be obviously you got to be qualified in something. You know, you got to be qualified in accounting or personnel, whatever the case is. I mean, it can't you can't just have plumber Joe go in there and try and do accounting for the treasury. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. But maybe you have other skills that you can offer this country. That's essentially how you need to think about it. Think about it as serving a tour, a tour in combat. Think of it, I mean, obviously without all the risks, but think about it as just going and serving your country for four years, doing the absolute best job you can, contributing something to this country that you have to offer, contributing your knowledge, your skills, everything for four years, and then coming back home because that's essentially what they're doing. But the problem is we have now is like-minded people, probably patriots, probably America-loving people, uncorrupted, went in there and didn't want to leave. And so they've been in there figuring out every way they can to keep their job. Like, you guys know how it is in the office. You guys know how it is when you're competing for work at a, at a factory or whatever it is. People will stab one another in the back. I mean, it gets, it gets political really quick. And you go in there, people like Dr. Fauci, you know how many people this guy had to screw over? You know how many awful things that guy had to do to stay in office for as long as he did? What, 50 years? He was the highest paid federal employee in the country under underneath the president. He was the second highest paid federal employee in the country under the president of the United States. And some people argue it's because of much more nefarious reasons. And we're going to get into that and, and down the road. I'm looking into it right now. It's definitely some wild stuff, if true. And it certainly sounds true based off the evidence that I've gotten so far, essentially saying that they gave Dr. Fauci this giant raise in his salary because they wanted him to start testing bioweapons. They wanted him to start developing viruses and biological weapons. And this is why they paid him so much money. I I'm still digging into it, so I don't want to get into it too soon, but I that's going to be on the next show. So I just wanted to give a little teaser of what we're going to be talking about. But I think that's, listen, back to the, transition project. I think that's great. Fire every damn employee. Fire. I say fire everyone, but you can't do that. But I'm saying go in there. People like Alexander Vindman, this guy, what has he done? I mean, people say that he was he was in the military. What did he do? Did he ever see active combat? Did he go right into officer training school? So he came right out of boot camp, probably went into officer training school and then went right into Washington, D.C. because he probably knows somebody. His uncle was a bureaucrat or whatever. And then this guy, this guy was in the Trump administration, a bureaucrat in the Obama administration, now in the Trump administration. And you had Obama loyalists that hated Donald Trump and was stabbing him in the back every chance they could. People like Alexander Vindman, many, many bureaucrats from the Obama administration. So it's not it's so it's it's OK for Obama to have, you know, loyalists of Obama foaming at the mouth worshiping Barack Obama. But it's not OK for Donald Trump to have pe like minded people on his transition team. Get out of here, man. These people, dude, they stabbed Donald Trump in the back every chance they could. 
And not because it was helpful for the country, it wasn't. What did Alexander Vindman do that contributed to this country? What, he put this country through an impeachment because Donald Trump didn't read his stupid transcript that he wanted him to read? And then this guy has the audacity to start a middleman company for the weapons transfers in Ukraine. I mean, it's just truly incredible stuff. That is exactly the type of stuff I'm talking about. So Obama loyalists tried to overthrow a duly elected president. That is why he needs to go in there and fire all their asses. On day one, fire all their asses. Vinmin, everybody. Well, I've, I've been saying this for a long time. Be, people, the rats are going to be jumping the ship as soon as he takes his hand off the Bible. So as soon as he takes his hand off that Bible, you're going to start watching the bureaucrats running out of that place like it's on fire. They're gone. They're, they're jumping ship. That place will be empty. And so this is why Sean, I think his name's Sean or Shane or uh, Blake. I can't remember his name. But this is why, in fact, you know what? I have it right here. Since I got the website pulled up, <clears throat> I could tell you who it is. This is pretty cool, man. So here's Project 2025 Pillars. So the policy agenda. Building on the legacy of mandate for leadership, this comprehensive policy guide for the incoming presidential administration will offer specific proposals for every major issue facing the country, pulling from the expertise of, an, of the entire conservative movement. They are literally bringing in you, you, the Trump supporters, the Make America Great Again people. They're pulling you into the administration. They're giving you a seat at the table. This is what I find incredible. And so, you know, I didn't know this, but during the Trump administration, they had this giant whiteboard in the Oval Office, I guess. And on this whiteboard, they took the issues that they polled Americans were having, all the major issues in the country. And I think it was Mark Meadows that said this. I was watching a documentary. And he said on that giant whiteboard, they had all the issues facing Americans whether it's inflation, whether it's taxes, whatever it is. I mean, there, there was a, a ton of them. And Mark Meadows said that he literally remembers Donald Trump and his administration, the people at the top that were helping him get this country back on track, literally marking out the issues one by one by one as they got them completed. It was, it was an awesome, you know, I didn't word it as good as he did, but they were literally standing in the Oval Office and said, okay, tax cuts, check mark, and they would mark it out. Then they said, okay, um, justice reform, First Step Act, marked it out. Then they said, okay, how about the farmers? And whatever they do with the farmers, they would mark it out. So they were literally tacking the issues that the American people had. It was truly incredible, something, something I've never read about or seen from a presidential administration in my life. And so I thought that was amazing. And that's exactly what we need again. Where you, the American people, the conservatives, the people that love this country, the patriots, you get a seat at the table. You get to decide the direction this country is going in. The American people have a say so for once in their lives how this country is ran. I think that is incredible. And I hope it's a trend that lives on in our conservative presidents forever. So personal database. So the most comprehensive policy agenda will have only limited impact with, without the right people in place to implement it. The project will cast a net across the country to identify conservatives from all walks of life to serve in the next conservative administration. And then right underneath it, it says, interested in applying, question mark. So you would click on that if you want to apply. And I don't know what the application process looks like. We'll just look at it. So presidential personnel database, database Want to be considered for positions in our presidential administration? Submit your resume today to be included in the personal database. Please fill out the questionnaire below and upload your resume for inclusion in the 2025 Presidential Transition Project Talent Database if you would like to be considered for positions in a presidential administration. Project 2025 is the effort of a massive coalition of conservative organizations that have come together to ensure a successful administration begins in January 2025 with the right conservative policy. Recommendations like this is great, dude. This is great. And then they have a, a submit your application or submit your resume below. And so you scroll down and then training. So to turn this talent pool into effective conservative administrators, the project will bring together experts who have served in prior administrations and can share their knowledge through workshops, seminars, online videos, and membership. So you're going to be getting trained 
by people like uh, Steve Cortez. You're going to be getting training from people like Donald Trump, possibly. You're going to be getting training from the people you know. You're going to be getting training from the best people in the world to contribute what you have to offer to this country for four years and then go back home. I think it is the most incredible thing. I would probably, man, I would be ecstatic. I may just, I may just submit my resume. Um, and then they have a hundred, 180 day playbook. So here's their 180 day playbook. The time is short and conservatives need a plan. The project will create a playbook of actions to be taken in the first 100, uh, 180 days of the new administration to bring quick relief to Americans suffering from the left's devastating policies. Wow, incredible. Yeah, his name's Blake, and you can you can contact him here. This is great, man. I think it's great. I wanted to share that with you. So look, if you guys have something to offer, you've heard it here. If you have something to offer, if you want to help this country and you want to make a difference, go to project2025.org, send, your, send in your resume, and enter the, the personal database. Maybe they'll pick you, and maybe you will be a part of something spectacular. You will most definitely be a part of history. That I can promise you when Donald Trump wins. All right. So one last thing I thought was really cool. I wanted to end the show off since it's a Monday. I wanted to end the show off with something a little bit easy. Um, nothing crazy since we were, we were, we've been going crazy the whole show. So I wanted to kind of ease it up a little bit. And, um, so NASA detects molecule on another planet that can only be produced by life. This is incredible. So NASA scientists have detected evidence of possible life on a planet over 100 light years away. I don't know how they do this. This is insane. The space agency's James James Webb Space Telescope discovered a molecule called dimethyl sulfide, or DMS, on the distant planet, which on Earth can only be produced by life, according to a report from the BBC. Quote, on Earth, DMS is only produced by life. The bulk of it in Earth's atmosphere is emitted from photoplankton in marine environments. University of Cambridge professor Niku Madhusudan, who led the research, told BBC. This is pretty cool. So the discovery marks the first time astronomers have detected possible DMS in a planet orbiting a distant star, according to the report. Along with the discovery of DMS, NASA researchers said they have also detected methane and CO2 in the planet's atmosphere, a sign the planet could be the home of a water ocean. The planet named K218b is located about 120 light years away and is almost nine times the size of Earth. The distant planet had already ticked all the boxes researchers generally look, generally look for when evaluating whether a planet can support life, including its temperature, the presence of carbon, and potentially liquid water. Confirmation that the planet has DMS would be a huge deal, Madhu Sudan told the BBC, adding that more research will be needed and that he feels a responsibility to get this right if we are making such a big claim. The James Webb Telescope evaluates distant planets by analyzing light that passes through their atmosphere, which contains chemical signatures of molecules. The details can be dis- the details can be deciphered by splitting the light into its constituent frequencies, rather like a prism creating a rainbow spectrum. If parts of the resulting spectrum are missing, it has been absorbed by chemicals and the planet's atmosphere, enabling researchers to discover its composition. NASA's Hubble telescope originally detected the presence of water vapor on K218b, leading to the planet being studied by the Webb telescope. Despite the cautious optimism, Dr. Robert Massey, the research and deputy director of the Royal Astronomical Society in London, told the BBC he was excited by the possible discovery. Quote, we are slowly moving toward the point where we will be able to answer that big question as to whether we are alone in the universe or not, Macy said. I'm optimistic that we will one day find signs of life. Perhaps it will be this. Perhaps in 10 or even 50 years, we will have evidence that is so compelling that it is the best explanation. This is awesome, man. Dude, the James Webb Space Telescope is wild. This thing, think about that, folks. It can detect the chemical signature in the atmosphere of a planet a hundred light years away. That is crazy, man. So that this is why I love astronomy. I love astrophysics. I love all this stuff. I wish I could talk about that all the time. A hundred light years is the distance 
light travels in one year. So light travels at 186,282 miles per second in a vacuum. (laughs) That to me is wild, man. 186,282 miles per second. So if you want to know how fast that is, flip off your, your bedroom light and then flip it on. It almost seems like it's instantaneous, right? It's not. It is actually moving at a speed, but it's moving so fast and you're so close to it that it seems like it's instantaneous. But when you move further away, if you were to, say, move 186,282 miles away from that bedroom light and you flipped it on, it would take exactly one second to reach your eyeballs. And so I hope that put it in perspective and explained it to you better. So 100 light years away and this telescope can detect the chemical signature in the atmosphere of a planet is mind-blowing to me. So the light that the telescope was receiving is actually light that happened 100 years ago. So for instance, the light you were, when you look up at the sun, the light, you, the light that is reaching your eyeballs is actually eight minutes old. Wild, right? And so when you look up at the night sky, a lot of the stars that you see, the light that is hitting your eyeballs is, well, it could be millions of years old or billions of years old. It just depends on how far that light is. But what's really crazy is you can be looking at a light from a star that's not even there anymore. And it exploded and went supernova millions of years ago. And then out of nowhere, it'll just disappear. So every light that you're seeing that's hitting your eyeballs from space is millions, possibly even billions of years old, except for our sun. It takes eight minutes for the light from our sun to reach us. Eight minutes, which is pretty wild. But I thought we would end the show with something cool like this. You know, it gets into the deeper philosophical questions and religious. Obviously, finding life on another planet would throw... um would bring up some real religious issues. It would it would cause a fizzy for a lot of different stuff. And, you know, science is always on the search to try and prove the Bible wrong. It's what it seems like to me. And so, uh, you know, a lot of scientists, believe it or not, are still religious. Is that not crazy? So you still have scientists that do still believe in God. They still have faith in a God. And to me, it's not important that they, it's not important that they still believe in it. It's not, it's not like it's they're dumb. It's just that they understand the importance of believing in a higher power and believing in faith and having faith in a higher power. Because listen, folks, you live your whole life thinking there's nothing after it. You're going to be a very miserable person. And so this is why I think we're watching the degradation of our country right now is there's 25 percent less people going to churches now. And I just feel like and I've been saying this since the first episode we did on this podcast. The more they remove faith and religion from society, the worse things get. The separation of church and state was probably one of the biggest mistakes this country ever made. By taking church away from schools was very, very uh, dangerous, is very damaging to this country, very damaging, because it's not the fact that you believe in a higher power. You know, a lot of people that, you know, the secularists or the, the atheists you know, they'll sit there and say, oh, you're dumb believing in God. It's it's a dumb thing to believe in, like you're almost like you believe in ghosts. Or they, they essentially think that they're smarter than people that believe and have faith in God and religion. But what they don't realize is that it takes just as much faith to believe that we came from nothing than it does we were actually created by a higher power. And so they lose the argument right there. Now, there is arguments that can go. I find science to be spectacular. I would love the notion that there was life created on another planet because to me, God created the universe and everything in it. And so if there is life on another planet, that also would be created by God. And it's not as, you know, believing in God isn't as important as to why you believe in God. When you figure that out, that is the important part. Having faith in God or having faith in a religion does a lot more than just you praying, waking up and saying you believe in God, but actually understanding why you believe in God is really important. And there's nothing better than living your life by the Ten Commandments. This is what I find funny is, you know, a lot of the Democrats, the fascist leftists, 
They embrace separation of church and state. And in fact, they want religion moved from our government. They say our religion influences our government too much. What these people don't realize is that they follow the Ten Commandments already. And so they're sitting here saying that, oh, Ten Commandment kids shouldn't be forced to learn the Ten Commandments. But it's like, wait a minute. But every single human being follows the Ten Commandments every day of their life. The Ten Commandments are not like some you know, some deeply religious thing. It says the basic things in a civilized society. Don't murder. Don't cheat on your wife. Honor thy father and mother. Don't steal. So all of it is already deeply embedded into our human DNA. It's just things that are bad to do. You see what I'm saying? So the everybody is naturally embedded with the Ten Commandments. Everyone realizes it's not good to kill people. That's why even atheists believe that it's not right to kill people. Where do they get that from if they're atheists? They get it from God. They just haven't found him yet. That's all. So I think they need to put God and religion back into the schools. I'm not saying they got to force kids to learn it. I'm just saying the separation of church and state needs to be a – it needs to be removed. This This is something that I feel very strongly about. I think the collapse of our society is could all be delegated down to removing faith and religion from our society. And so the more religion is removed from society, the worse things get. Because I'm telling you, folks, there's nothing worse than waking up every day believing you don't have a purpose or meaning in life, believing that we're just here for a small point of time and there's nothing after. There, you, you would be a very miserable person, wouldn't you? And this is why Democrats are miserable people. Ah, you see now? You get it. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is all for today's show. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. And I would really appreciate it if you shared the show with your friends and family. Let them know about what's happening in this country. We are trying to create an army of informed citizens because informed people make good decisions and uninformed people make bad decisions. Bad decisions like voting for Joe Biden. That's a bad decision. Just one example. I could think of a ton more. So I would really appreciate it if you shared the show with your friends and family. It really helps out the show. Also, you can follow the show on YouTube, follow the show on Rumble. If I get enough followers on Rumble, I can get my own URL. And so if I get my own URL to Rumble, then I'll have a website built. And so we can put our Rumble player on the website because I don't know how long the show's going to last on YouTube. I just don't. I mean, YouTube can pull the plug at any moment. And I'm afraid that if the show gets too big, they will. So we got to have some type of backup plan. So, um, yeah, so if you could uh, follow the show on Rumble, follow the show on YouTube, and definitely follow the podcast. I really appreciate it. We got to get that. We got to get the numbers up there, and that certainly helps. We got to beat the algorithm. So if you know anybody that would be interested in learning about the stuff we're talking about, and even if they're not interested, give them the show. Get just let them let them listen to the show, and maybe it'll change their mind. Who knows? You never know. But that this is what we got to do. We got to be proactive in all this. And I have, um, I got a lot of stuff I'm going to be talking about on the next show, which I'm going to be getting into right after this one. I just have a little bit more research to do about a couple things, and we're going to be getting into the next show. It's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to be talking about some um, some court actions that have been taken. And most importantly, I want to talk about John Eastman. John Eastman is in the battle for his bar, his his law license. And some of the things he's saying is wild. And he had every right to challenge a 2020 election. And in fact, all of us had every right to challenge a 2020 election. And everybody has the right to be skeptical about what happened in the 2020 election. And that's exactly what the John Eastman trial is about. So we're going to be getting into that next episode. So you can get a hold of me at Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com. If you guys just want to get in touch with me, want to reach out. If you guys want to share an article with me, I'll look into it. If you want to share some info, I'll look into it. If you want to give me a lead for a story, I'll look into it. Just uh, send me an email, Show at gmail.com. I will get back with you. I will respond. And then uh, also, I'm starting to really update the Facebook page with the episodes. So make sure you follow the show on Facebook. And then I'm trying to get more on Twitter, uh, well, X, formerly known as Twitter, and uh, also TikTok, all the platforms. Follow the show on all the platforms. I would really appreciate it. And that's really going to help the show out and help get the numbers up there so that we can beat the algorithm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I want you guys to have a good Monday. Have a good week. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. 
God bless you, and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.